Hello, welcome to Zim Kids. I'm Dr. Abstract. Now you can get to Zim Kids at kids.zimjs.org. So come on in, and I'm going to show you how we can make a scene. So I'll scroll down here. Look at that. Make scenes. So if you want to learn about coding, then you should be taking a look at all of these parts and trying out the handy tutorials here to work with bugs and make things. <laughs> but you can also make a scene in Slate. And Slate is this link right here. Or we can click. And that's a place where we can type any code that we want. Of course, it needs to work. And then we can test our code over here. You may see uh, it starting with this demo right here of Pragma. And there's the code for that. But uh, we want to make our own scene, and we'll do that over here. So if I test right now, we have nothing in it. All right, we can add some assets, and they're available up here. And if you want help on how to do that, well, this is a help video, <laughs> so hopefully this will give you help. But you can press help there, and what that does is it jumps you down to this help section right here where it tells you how to use the asset buttons and also see the video. <laughs> That's this video. There's a bunch of examples as well. We can add a background color, and that just adds a color. That's not really using assets. But here's adding a background image, such as a beach, and we'll do that in this video. And there's adding images, like a butterfly. So we'll do that too. And there's the code to be able to do that. And we'll, we'll talk about that. Uh, here, we can put things into containers and move them all together as well. So we'll take a look at that. Here's adding sounds so that when we press on the bug, it plays a sound. And then here's adding a background sound, which is a little bit tricky because we're really supposed to click on something in the app or mouse down on something in the app before we can play a sound. It's a sort of a polite thing that the browsers make it do, because otherwise people would go to a page and sound would be playing right away. So that makes it a little tricky to add the code for a toggle button, as you can see, or the start button, a little bit tricky, it's not too bad. We can actually test just fine, nice and easily with the background sound, but that will only work because we're pressing the buttons here to play the sound there. If you did it in a full mode, it wouldn't work. Anyway, don't worry too much about that. Let's uh, let's try, before we go into the assets, let's just show you how to change the color of this. The way you do that is you go frame.color is equal to something, such as yellow. We have a bunch of colors. Most of the, you know, the plain colors, there's green, for instance, will work, and that's fine. And then we hit test. So there it is, that's green. This outer color here didn't change, it's still black. We can change that color by going frame.outer color is equal to blue. Oops, <laughs> semicolon. And we can test that. We may have done some other colors down in the um, in the examples, but don't worry about it. There, there you go. There's also a way, if you take a look at the demo, you see how that's called that's called a gradient. So it changes from one color to the other. And if you take a look at the code there, we made a new page. And we told it the stage width and stage height and told it two different colors. We added that to the stage. So if you did that, for instance, if we copy this, copy, and paste it in here like so, and do a test, there it is. Look at that. It's going from pink to blue, and our outer color happens to be blue. Okay, so that's some ways that you could, uh, maybe we should change the outer color at that point. Yellow. <laughs> there we go. So now you can see it going pink to blue. That's some ways that you could start off without a background image and just start building things here. Uh, for instance, a new rectangle, or we'll do a circle, a new circle, and we'll make it 100 in radius and red and dot center and dot drag. So this is you making an app that just doesn't have any pictures, but it allows you to make Make whatever you want. You could start making a game that just has these shapes. All right, now let's go to assets and see how that works. We'll clear that and test. So we're back to, to nothing here. We're going to go and add a backing image. So I click on backings. 
Ooh, here's a bunch of different backings that we've collected for you. And thank you to Vecdeasy, where we got these from. And thank you to our co-op students who helped process all these. Okay, let's choose the beach, beach one. So you can click on the beach picture or the checkbox. You want that checked on and then hit save. What that does is it says, okay, now we have a beach zero one for a backing. And we can access that by going asset, singular, asset. We're using an asset. And then you put the name that is right here, beach01, inside of little quotes. That turns it into a string. If you don't use a string, it will break. And then we will dot center that. Let's have a look. So there's the asset. Asset, by the way, is a word for images and sound together. And we have images here and also sounds. One day we may add sprites as well, which are little animations. So there is our background image. Now, if we go to phone mode here, you'll see the phone mode makes it a bit longer and bigger. And you can see that the image doesn't really fit perfectly in the stage. And if we're not, it still doesn't fit. It, it's not high enough. So um, that's because the asset is just a little bit too small for for this, which means we'll need to adjust it. We can do that with scale.ska. So we put in a .ska, and if we make it twice as big and save it or hit test, there it is. It now fits. It's a little bit too big. As a matter of fact, if you want, we could drag it and sort of see uh, see what we mean. See, there's some. It's it's too big. Uh, maybe maybe it's just fine. Maybe we like it like that. But we'd sort of have to guess at the scale a little bit. Or, or we could we could make it this scale and then move it over. For instance, we could center and then dot M-O-V-E for move. And if we want to move it this way, this way, then it has to move negative. If it's negative X. So we could move it minus 300. Hey, there we go. So if we moved it zero, there's what it looks like, you see, but we're going to move it 300 pixels over in the negative direction. Okay, so that would look like this, negative 300. And hey, that looks pretty good. I like that. But there's an easier way perhaps to just fit the picture uh, or make the picture fill. And let's show you how we can do those two things. So rather than moving it, uh, what we'll do is we'll use scale 2. So if we use scale 2, that will scale to the stage. And I save this, and now it's scaled to fit in the stage like that. And if we made the, it a phone, it, it fits to the top this time. And if we made a portrait, there it is, fitting in there. So, I don't know, that's okay. Well, not really, right? Because it leaves this stuff on the top and the bottom. That's fit. So we want the squiggly bracket type colon fill. So see what we've done there? We've used the squiggly bracket to go to the type parameter of fill like that. Hey, look, now it fills the stage and there it is filling the stage on the phone and even on the portrait it fills it <laughs> okay so it, it fills it no matter what you choose uh, you can still move it afterwards but that'll probably do us for now it also may be now that we've uh, we know that we're going to want to use the fill for you kids in the next version of zim which who knows maybe you'll be using in the next version of zim we might make this the default so if you don't put anything at all in the scale two, perhaps we'll make it default to, um, to fill. So it may be easier when you get back here the next time. However, for now, that's what you need to do. And all this code right here is talked about and described down below here. So if we hit help, boop, it jumps us down below. And look, adding a background image. Here it is, asset and beach 01, scale 2 with a type of fill, and we're centering. And remember, you had to do these steps first. 
So steps to add a picture. Press the backings button at the top of the page. Select and save Beach 01. And you should see backings 01 in the comments. And then use the code to put it on the stage. And once again, do the steps above first. If you don't do the steps above, say we didn't add the backing, uh, or if we spell this wrong, such as maybe we asked for beach two, watch what happens when I test. Test. Oh, oh, Zim test error. If you're using asset to load images or sound, you must select the assets in the top buttons first. So uh, we would have to, we didn't, we didn't select beach 02. It says we only have beach 01. And be careful, there's a zero there. If you put beach one, that also wouldn't work. We get the same error. And it says, do not forget, low numbers start with zero, like pick zero one and zero two. The reason for that is, if we go into the backings and we find, say, these nature backings right here, nature zero one, nature zero two. Well, if we didn't put the zero in front, the order of these backings would be nature one, nature 10, nature 11, nature 12, nature 13, etc. So they wouldn't be ordered properly. The, the 10 and 11 would come before the two. So that's why we put zeros there um, so, that the, uh, so that the sorting is in the right order. Now we could get beach two if we wanted to by clicking beach two and hitting save. Now it says we've got beach uh, one and beach two. Well, we don't have beach one, we have beach zero one. That works, and beach zero two, that works too. <laughs> nice. However, we don't want uh, beach two, so we'll uncheck it, and we can hit save. All right, um, and, and now we've got an error saying, hey, we don't have beach two anymore. That's because that should be beach one. All right, hopefully I haven't confused you. <laughs> Are you guys still good? Yay! All right, we also don't want to drag the beach anymore, I don't think, and there it is centered. Let's add a bug to the beach. So we'll save that up. We'll go into the nature section here. And here's all the things that are available in nature. Ooh, nice, huh? And let's see, there's bug zero one. So we'll select that and we'll hit save. Now it says we've got backings beach zero one and nature bug zero one. So to add the bug, we go asset bug zero one dot center dot drag. Well, let's drag the bug. Hey, hello bug. So there it is. We can scale it if we want dot ska uh, 0.5. Now the bug is smaller, half as big. 0.5 in the scale. And these as well, you can put on one line or you can bump them down onto multiple lines. It's up to you how you want to do that. Same with here. Sometimes it's a little easier to see what's going on if we do this. And if the line gets too long, then putting them on multiple lines helps. Okay, it's up to you. So uh, there's a bug. And once again, if we go down to the help here, and look at adding images. You can see that we've added a bug. We did the selecting of the bug, and then we added the bug like that. Yay! Okay, how about containers? So with a container, you make the container first. A container is an invisible holder, and then you can put m many things in a container and move them all at once, or animate them all at once, or remove them all at once. Uh, you just remove the container and everything in it, you know, it goes away. So let's make a container. Because we're going to add things to it later, we'll make a variable for it. Var, um, let's see, how about gem is equal to a new container. Don't forget the capital C. You see how we've made a capital C there? Equals a new container. We won't add it yet. Uh, we maybe could, but uh, let's put some things into it first. 
Uh, what are we going to put in there? How about under nature again? We'll take a look and we'll make this gem. We'll use gem one, just like the picture, gem one. So now gem one is selected and also bug one is selected and we hit save. So it says under nature, we have bug one and we have gem one. So we can make an asset, asset, and we'll call this one gem 01 dot add to the container gem. So we called the container gem and we're going to add the gem to that. All right, uh, let me just check to see what we called it in the help files down here under using containers. We called it holder. Are you going to have a problem with that? You see how we've called it holder there and we keep on calling it holder here? Maybe we should call it the same thing as in the help file, just in case. So there's gem and we'll change it to say holder. So var holder, it's going to hold the gem. We Maybe in the help file, we didn't want to get you confused with this gem asset right here. So we've added it to the holder, but we still don't see it. Where is it? I don't see it. So at this point, if we wanted to, we could add the holder to the stage, holder dot. Well, if we center it, it will go in the same place as the bug. So let's position it and we'll position it over here on the right, say 40 comma 40 on the right at the bottom. There you go, semicolon. And there's the gem. It's, it's basically 40 from the right and the bottom. And I think we should do something about that. Let's see, it looks a little bit big. So we can say holder.ska.0.5 uh, and let's see, there it is. Like that, that's a little small. Well, I don't know if we need to do it exactly as in the help, but what do we do in the help? Hmm, it looks like we left it um, just how it is. Okay, so we'll make it big like it was. We won't bother scaling it. And we can also drag it, dot drag. Oops, I hit backings by accident. Um, test. Okay, we have to be a little bit careful about that. I'm going to show you why in just a second. Let's add another asset that is a face here. So asset and we'll go get it. It would be under people. One of these cartoon faces. How about cartoon two? That's just like the picture right there. And hit save. Don't forget to hit save. Save. That brings us back here. So that was called, if we look up here, cartoon two. And you can always copy that if you want. Copy. So under people, we have cartoon two. And then we'll paste it right in there in quotes. Cartoon 2 dot center on the holder. There. Oh, that looks funny. So those eyes are pretty big, but you can see that the Cartoon 2 has been centered on the holder. And we can scale this one. Dot ska, uh, 0.5. There we go. We're going to have a problem though, and this is something a little tricky about a holder. Watch what happens. If I drag the, oh, oh no. I seem to be dragging anything that's inside the holder. So when it comes to containers, if you just drag a container, it actually lets you drag what's inside the container. And that can be handy sometimes. You might want to make a container of a hundred monsters and drag whichever monster you pick up. <clears throat> if we don't want to do that though, we can use all colon true. So what we've done is put the squiggly brackets so that we can go directly to the all parameter. And then we say, please drag all. And if we say that and tech check it out, hey, look at that. That's great. So now it drags all of the container. Yay. Hello, bug. Hello, jewel. Ah. It's looking at the bug, isn't it? So that's a container. All right, well done. Let's scroll on down. We're going to now add a sound. Ooh. 
So hopefully you're still with us. I know the video is a little bit lengthy. Uh, you are always welcome to pause it and go get some cookies, unless you're in class. Mm. <laughs> well, <laughs> all right, let's add a sound. So we go over to sounds here. And here they are, and you can test the sound. I think you'll hear it. Let's try it. Yep, you hear it. There's a beep. And we were going to try a power up. Woo! So we'll select power up like that and hit save. Save. Now it says sounds. We have a power up sound. And we want to make the power up sound when we press the bug. So every time we we mouse down on the bug, we'll make a power up sound. So to do that, we should uh, put the bug in a variable so that we can um, put the on event onto the bug. I'll show you how. Var bug, but <laughs> var bug is equal to that asset. And right here, we can say bug dot on quote mouse down. That's a mouse down event, and we will call a function when we mouse down. So we will say function, round brackets, squiggly brackets, enter. So please call this anonymous function. Uh, remember, you guys need to do your lessons over on the Zim Kids. You need to do your lessons to know about events. There's a whole tutorial on events. So there's the function that we're going to call when we mouse down. And in there, we will call the asset. And what was it called again? Power up. I can double click, double click, double click, and then copy. The double click will select the whole word easily. Double click and copy. And then I'll paste that right in there, in between the quotes. Don't forget the quotes. If you don't put the quotes, this means a variable called power up. And we have not made a variable called power up. So you should put quotes around it. Double click and put quotes. There you go. So asset power up dot play. So if you want to play a sound, not dot pla, dot play, that will play the sound. So we save this. And when we press the bug, woo, lovely. <laughs> if that's too loud, you can set the volume here. So I think the volume is the first parameter. Let's try it. We'll just put 0 0.1. 0 0.1. If you play 1, that's at normal volume. If you play 0.5, that's at half a volume. If you play 0.1, that's at a low volume. Yeah. That might be nicer for your teachers. <laughs> there we go. We'll put it at 0 0.2, a little bit louder. All right. So that's down here in the help under adding sounds. Right here, bug dot on mouse down, play the asset power up. We didn't change the volume though at that point. We do show you how to do volume in the background sound. So let's try adding a background sound. Uh, we have to choose the background sound, so we'll go to sounds. And there's a backing sound right there. So that's what it sounds like. So we'll select it and we'll hit save. We can come back here. And as mentioned, the sound will play when we test it here. It will be fine. But I'll show you that it won't work in full mode or save mode. So let's try it. We would go asset. We put the name of the asset. And it is called backing. These will order by alphabet. Um, so backing comes before power up because it's alphabetically before, even though we added the power up first. Okay, so they're, they're alphabetical order. So we pick up backing and paste it there. So the asset dot backing dot play. Oh, not dot pla. <laughs> Did that twice now. Dot play. We can also set um, a couple things here. The volume can be point. Uh, we'll go point two, comma. And we can say loop colon true. Loop colon true will make the backing sound uh, loop. What do you know? So it will keep on playing over and over again. Hi, I'm the jewel. 
I'm the butterfly. Wee hee hee. I'm the butterfly. Woo hoo hoo. Hi, I'm the jewel. Boing 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 boing. <laughs> Okay, do you hear the uh, the backing sound is playing over and over? But watch what happens if we hit the full mode. Full. No, can we tell? Nice. <laughs> that could actually seem to work. Uh, how do I stop the sound? That's what commented out there. So I've commented out that backing sound and let's try again. Refresh. See? It didn't play. So it did work when we hit the button the once, but now that we have it, that sound plays, and the other sound started playing. But it's not playing now. It's only when we click on it that it plays, and you'll see that we'll get an error. And this would happen as well if you hit save, or indeed um, when you want to play it for people over the internet, if it were a real app, they have to interact with it first. So. There's a couple ways that we can do that, and I'll show you probably the, uh, the easier of the ways, and that is to make a button to start or a pane. Sometimes a pane is, um, is a good way to do it. So we're not going to play this asset until the user interacts with something. So we can say um, var intro is equal to a new pane, like that. And we use pain.show. It's a little bit different because it's got some special things. If we say pain.show, there's the pain. And what it did is it made the background a little bit darker. And there's the, the pain is up on top. And when you close it, that's, it goes lighter. And you can change all of that stuff. You can also change the size of the pain. So we can make it 400 by 300. And we can say what it says. Start. So I've put start in quotes, and I've said how big the pane will be. There. The next parameter is what color it is. Yellow is a pretty color. Yellow. Yay. Start. Although it didn't play the sound. So the next thing we do is we apply an event. Much like our mouse down event here, we use a close event. So that looks like this. Intro dot on close I think that's it comma call a function there we are and in the function here is where we play the sound so when we close the pane we're going to play the sound right there so it's a little tricky but let's try there it goes let's try that again test so no sound is playing because the user is supposed to interact with the app first. Here's what they do. Start. And now the backing sound plays. Yay! So that's a little tricky, but if you get used to it, we have to do these events all the time because that's interactive and we are making interactive media. So events are what um, help us with interactivity. So you'll get pretty used to it after you try it a few times. And there we are playing the backing sound when, we, uh, when the pane is closed. Okay, and it's not so bad because maybe you want to give a message anyway. If you were making a little game, you would want maybe the instructions of the game here or a little uh, intro message that tells you about the game, right? And so that's okay. And then when we press it, it starts. There is, in the help down here, another version right at the bottom, which is a toggle button. It's a bit longer, and this has been a long video. So you can take a look at that code and maybe get your teacher to help you with it too, or just paste it right in there. And that will make a toggle button for you so that you can turn the music off and on. Nice, huh? All right. Well, let's see. Is that it? I think that's all pretty exciting. I'm going to uh, just refresh here our test so that I can think for a second and make sure. Oh, perhaps I should show you a little bit about um, about down here. Well, well, I've got you. 
So you can clear the code and it will say, are you sure you want to clear it? Well, I don't really want to clear it. <laughs> um, but say you wanted to try out the demo code over here. You wanted to try this code over here and, and play around with it. Well, um, you it would be too bad because you did all this coding work here. Oh, well, you could save it. And if you save it, it saves it out to a file on your computer. And that's okay, but it's a little bit hard to then get, get it again. You have to go and view the source, <clears throat> and that's a bit of a pain. So we've added a button here called Store, and watch what happens. Store. Store the current code or restore stored code. <laughs> it's like a tongue twister. We want to store this. Store. Now this code is stored. So what we can do is clear it. Yeah, we can clear this code and we can take all of this code here and copy it and paste it into here and hit test. There we go. So now we're testing the demo code and we can make changes to it. We could say, please make it red. You see, I made a change. And you can say, please wiggle this really fast. 0.2 and 0.4, that's faster. Whee, look at it go. How fast can you wiggle it? Let's wiggle it more. Let's wiggle it by 200. Save. Whoa, look at it go. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Oh, that's the minimum wiggle. <laughs> Let's see, I think it still works. How about 50 to 550? There we go, oh yeah. So now that we're finished with this code, or maybe it was some code that a teacher has told you about, we can go back to the store and say, restore, restore. And hey, our old code is back again. Yay! Oh, isn't that great? The other thing that maybe you should know about is if you're finished, say for the day of your lessons, and maybe somebody else is coming to use a computer and you want to clear your backings, or perhaps somebody has already used the computer and they've got a whole bunch of backings here and now you don't want those. You can go into any of these, such as the backings, and if you hit clear like this, I'm going to say no, it would clear all of the ones on this page. But if you, and then you'd have to go into each page and clear them. But if you hit clear assets on all pages and hit yes, there we go. It took them away from here. And if we go back, oh, you can see that we're getting an error now because we cleared the assets and the assets aren't listed here anymore. No longer do we have the beach or the bug one oh, or the gem or the cartoon or the sound, the backing sound. Oh no, or the power up. So we'd have to go find those and add them again. <laughs> there you go. All right, I am Dr. Abstract and from Dr. Abstract and Pragma here, I hope you have a great day and I hope that was fun for you to be able to make scenes in Zim Kids using Slate. And remember, you can press the slate here as well. <laughs> Sorry that we're broken. Bye-bye. <laughs> Have a great day or night. Bye.